Hi there and welcome back to the Der Grenadier YouTube channel for another video. Today we are going to review this reproduction mosquito net, something that every reenactor needs. These mosquito nets are made right here in the Netherlands by a good friend of mine called Daan. He is one in one of my reenactment groups, uh, the first one that I joined. Uh, and he makes these right at home with his own hands. Uh, and these are one of the first reproductions available to reenactors uh, worldwide. They are not being sold at this very moment, uh, which is unfortunate of course. But they will most likely be sold very soon on his website called Pocket Litter 39. And just for you, I'm going to review this mosquito net just so you can get a good look at it and decide for yourself if you want one, yes or no. Of course, uh, the original soldiers in the Wehrmacht had a lot of these mosquito nets. Almost every soldier had one, uh, especially in Russia. Uh, it was very common to see pictures of soldiers with mosquito nets because there are a lot of mosquitoes there because of swamps and stuff not very comfortable but these will protect you and they are also a very good measure of camouflage for soldiers that did not have a helmet cover or anything else to cover their helmet face and uh, m43 field cap so we are going to dive right into the review so this is the mosquito net that I received from Dan uh, from Pocket Little 39. And the first thing that I noticed of course when it came out of the box, uh, and to the contrary of most post-war alternatives, is that it is very, very large. And this is what I mean. This is my Solbuch. And as you can see, the net is noticeably larger than most post-war ones, because those are something like this. Way smaller, not meant to fit over your helmet and shoulders. And this one is. It has a white door string and this is uh, a reproduction of the most common uh, surviving example, uh, which is a Beha mosquito net. Uh, this is a 1943 marked. Uh, this is how he marks them. And he has, I believe, one or two originals of these. Um, and this is the most surviving example because they found a crate of these nets uh, in the last few years, somewhere between the 1980s and now. Uh, and most original, net, original nets that were used by soldiers, of course, uh, were thrown away after the war or used until they were no longer in a usable condition and then thrown away. Uh, so there are not that many surviving mosquito nets that look different uh, than the Beha ones. Luckily, Dan is going to make more reproductions that look different than this one. This was just his first run, his first try, so that is great. For now, these are all that are out here uh, reproduction-wise. Don't use an original. Um, the material is, I believe, mostly... Uh, natural fibers, not too, not too much synthetics in there. Um, it all feels very, very high quality and well made. Uh, I tied the drawstring together so these won't get pulled back into the uh, into the loop when you can where you can't get them out that easily. Uh, so that's a little bit of advice for you to do that if you haven't done that already. Um, the fire and cigarettes will burn holes in these, so be very careful uh, because, of course, this will burn um, when you get fire to it. He makes these uh, with his hands. Uh, I believe he said that he had to pre-stitch everything by hand and then machine stitch over it again, all around, and this stitch that goes around the edge because these are two panels that are stitched together from both sides and then sewn around uh, and then sewn around here to make a loop for the drawstring. So this is actually a lot of work to make. Uh, 
if I had to make these, I would be so extremely bored after one that I would stop immediately there. Uh, but he actually has made quite a bit of these. And I'm going to add some pictures of my last event. Uh, most of my unit uh, already has these. Uh, even the unit that he is not in. Uh, he has joined for a couple of times. Uh, maybe he'll consider a second group like I did. Uh, would be very fun to be in more groups with him. Um, so it is actually quite nice to wear these with a couple of guys. And we actually had quite a few people in the public that asked about the mosquito nets because it's not something that you see very often uh, of course original pictures yes but in reenactments you don't see them that much uh, so it is actually something that draws the attention of the public which is not something that i had expected up front and it was very nice to explain why we were wearing them and just to show you how large this thing actually is it is large enough to cover my shoulders completely and I still have room left to add a helmet under here, uh, which is why I have some little excess material. Uh, but if I was wearing a helmet, that would fill up the space and it would be tightly covering uh, everything up here. Uh, completely protecting me from mosquitoes and everything else that it is intended to do. Um, I would suggest wearing the drawstring in the front so you can easily adjust it. Also, this will prevent that the stitching on the sides will cover your face on the front, which will also mean that the material will sort of fold over your face, uh, which means that you will see a little bit less than when you are wearing it correctly. Uh, visibility in these is actually quite good. You can see my face. Uh, I can see about that much, but everything around me. Uh, so that's actually pretty good. That is going to be it for now. If you want to see something else about this mosquito net, uh, please ask. Maybe I can make a follow-up video. Uh, and I'm going to add some pictures of my last event right behind this scene. I thank you for watching and I hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a nice weekend.